Kumi kumi wo Sia ya Hese ya ya Hese ya ya Sia ya do Kumi kumi wo Sia ya Hese ya ya Hese ya ya Sia ya do Ba do Ba be se ho Hese ya Hese ya ya Hese ya ya Kobe kobe mo Hese ya ya Hese ya ya Sia ya Noba Noba benga se tubula Hese ya ya Hese ya ya Amanda Kudrijiwe Au state ni sizwa ni zvile ni simamela Bafiga bafana bangane bateta ni mamela Kudrijiwe ngoba bafigi la bafazi belizwe Beba nyingi bateta kwa vokoteka The true leaders of our nation have spoken and you've heard them There is not much more to say for as other political parties are busy drawing people who are supposed to be in a retirement village to seeking to lead this nation, we have seen here today young and true leaders who should be capable of taking our country to its true destination. Comrades and friends, I would urge the Speaker of the House to not address President Zuma tomorrow as honorable when she invites him to take up the podium to represent the state of the nation. For as we all know, that it is a matter of fact now that he is not. And more importantly, he shouldn't be addressing us as a nation in his capacity as a president, for he has broken the contract between himself and the citizens of this country. Instead, Parliament should be telling all of us when it intends to hold him to account following the Constitutional Court judgment on the secure in comfort. My dear President Zuma, you must know that as a nation we no longer have confidence in your leadership. You are not trusted by the people. You are not trusted by civil society and increasingly you are not trusted by your own party and its allies. When the opposition parties supported a motion of no confidence last year, You deliberately misinterpreted the objection of your own members when they objected to that motion and that it meant support for you. But now you know that ANC members through their various structures have urged you to step down, not only as president of the country, but also as a leader of that esteemed organization, the African National Congress. For you have used every opportunity to bring shame to a glorious movement that our nation respects for its role in liberating our country. It is, and you know, the state of our nation that today we are, lead, we are led by a limping president who doesn't enjoy the full confidence, not only of many of his colleagues in cabinet, parliament, and the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress, but importantly, he doesn't enjoy the confidence of the masses of our people who are perturbed, aghast, and disgusted at his dishonorable and shameful conduct. Here is a leader who thinks our hard-won freedom and right to self-determination can be handed over to shady characters, a gang of looters who are determined to steal from the poor. A leader not, befit not befitting an honor that the nation has bestowed on him to be a president. For he prefers to be a court brook. He prefers to be a spanner boy, a runner of a bunch of crooks and criminals. In President Zuma, we have a wounded tiger, a wounded tiger unleashed by its handlers to sow mayhem and destruction on our land at great cost, both on our nation and his own party, the African National Congress, as he seeks to regain lost ground. 
they'll be dishing out a list of scapegoats for a litany of failures that we have witnessed. This as a prelude to his ill-conceived yet destructive actions that we are going to see in the course of this year. We have to say this. President Jacob Zuma, we absolutely have no confidence in your ability to reflect reality when you address the nation tomorrow night. And we know from history that you will, deliver them on, you will not deliver on the majority of promises that you're going to be making tomorrow. And so don't bother promising us a radical agenda to include black people in the economy. Rather tell us what program you've embarked upon in eight years as president of our nation to effect this. What progress you have made? What new steps do you intend to ensure that this important objective is achieved? Evidence suggests that despite a mandate both from the Constitution and the party that you lead, you not only have failed in this regard, but you have set the promising positive steps of your predecessors, both Nelson Mandela and Thabo Mbeki, back many years. We can say without fear of contradiction that the period between 2002 and 2007 saw the fastest growth of the black middle class, an economy that was beginning to reduce unemployment, an unprecedented economic growth of over 4.5 percent, a systematic reduction of poverty, a stable debt to GDP ratio, controlled inflation, a healthy balance of payment. We had a black economic empowerment strategy that saw the emergence of shining example of new, of, of new black business. And yet, under your leadership, President Zuma, all these gains have been reversed. And look at the mess you plunged our country in. It must be said that the same applies with land restitution, redistribution, and security of tenure. You have, made, you have had a clear mandate both from the Constitution and your own party for years. But over the last eight years, you have failed to address this. Please don't invite us to your altar of fools by promising to do better tomorrow. All you have to offer us now is the word radical, which means absolutely nothing. Let's not forget that in 2012, the ANC conference voted to abandon the willing buyer, willing seller policy. Only a year later, you paid out a billion rand on a land restitution settlement for Malamala Game Reserve, and yet provided neither technical no financial assistance to emerging black farmers who secured the land from, of their forebears. And guess what? An NGO does the work that you should have done as the president of this country, succeeds in the court to secure tenure for over 1,000 black labor tenants on white-owned farmland. In a blatant act of trying to steal their victory, you unsuccessfully appeal the decision. You appeal that black workers should not, security, should not have security of tenure on the farmland. Add to this the many allegations that money intended for land redistribution is diverted in shady schemes of looters that benefit mainly corrupt white farmers and your cronies. All that we want to know tomorrow is that you tell us and we demand to know how much land has been redistributed during your presidency. <clears throat> and then, of course, there is the scourge of racism. Over the past few years, racists have become emboldened in their offensive rhetoric and violent behavior. Because you, who is supposed to be our leader, are incapable of convincing our nation of the efficacy of non-racialism. Racial chauvinists, who without a word of reprimand from you, issue anti-Indian, anti-colored, and sometimes anti-white sentiments, fanning the fires of racism, find comfort in your inner circle, and pretend to speak on behalf of an ANC 
that has long disavowed all forms of racism. There can be no doubt that the realization of social cohesion requires the redress of the conditions of black people as the most marginalized. It is also the case that racial chauvinism, a close cousin, by the way, of tribalism, is dividing our nation and us back many years under your watch. Our young people are desperate, disillusioned, and disappointed as your repeated promises of employment are not delivered on. Youth unemployment has worsened since you assumed office. The black school systems has, been, has seen nothing of your promised improvement. Your false promise, which you made knowing that you will never be able to deliver on it, of free education is threatening to destroy a great asset that we have in our universities. This is a president, this president is a man with no heart, a man with no soul and no compassion. He has nothing to say, as you heard here earlier on, or contribute to real issues affecting South Africans. Racism, sexism, discrimination against people of the various sexual orientation or ability. He has nothing to offer in terms of seriously addressing inequality and social injustice in our society. While the entire nation is mourning over the silent 94, in shock over the way the Esitimeni issue has been handled, Zuma has nothing to offer but a cold press statement. Let me tell you what a real president would have done. He would be out there visibly consoling the nation, addressing the needs of the families, and showing compassion. <clears throat> a real president would order the national flag be flown a fast mast and call on a nation and call for a national day of mourning as we grieve the devastating indictment of our nation's health care and the neglect of the most vulnerable. My dear President, it is not too late for you to do so. Call on us to mourn and remember the shameful death of the innocent and the vulnerable. The blemish of Esitimeni, like the Marikana massacre, only shows how little the lives of the poor and vulnerable matter to you. We need as a country and we need urgently and a leader who knows to put the poor and the vulnerable first. This, Mr. President, is our real state of the nation. Our nation is experiencing increased pain, hunger, thirst, and deprivation while those in the center of power turn their backs so they can focus on amassing ill-begotten wealth. They are eating away our nation with their corruption and their abuse of power. They believe and they feel entitled as they claim it is their turn to eat. Money intended for social services, as you heard earlier on, like education, health, and social development is being stolen by some politicians, public servants, and service providers. The grip of state capture rips the soul of state-owned enterprises, encourages gross financial mismanagement, and promotes unfettered looting. It is getting even tighter as Zuma and his cronies line up the biggest tender grab, and you heard about it, the nuclear energy deal which best epitomizes the current phase of state capture. We have to stop this. We have to harness our collective energy as ordinary South Africans, as members of organizations, and as people with influence, all of us, wherever we are, we have to stop this before it is too late. <clears throat> I am inspired by that true servant leader, Oliver Reginald Tambo, who foresaw the challenges that would face the ANC as it moved from liberation movement to a governing party. Speaking during a meeting, addressing young exiles 
at the Solomon Mahlangu Freedom College in Tanzania, he uttered these words which ring through today. And he said, and I quote, let's tell the truth to ourselves. Even if it coincides with what the enemy is saying, let us nonetheless tell the truth. Close quote. Yes, comrades, and yes, friends, we must tell the truth. For there lie, therein lies our freedom, the truth. And we do so today, encouraged by the many who have joined us since we started this journey, and trust that you and many others will join us and isolate once and for all this corrupt president and his henchmen and women. As the Save South Africa campaign, we asked our supporters to tell us their own truth about the state of our nation today. And we've received responses, and they are summed up in three phrases, nepotism, corruption, state capture. At the various rallies that we ran across the country, we asked them the same question, and they raised the same three phrases. Some of our investment organizations have also developed their own assessment of the real state of the nation. And they sum it up, nepotism, corruption, and state capture. This, President Zuma, is the real state of your nation. It is being torn apart by nepotism, corruption, and state capture. And you are at the center of it all. You have been implicated in the most gross attempts to sell our nation out for personal financial gain, as revealed in the Public Protector State of Capture Report. You disrespect our Constitution as you do our Constitutional Court. Yet, in fact, you have become a serial offender. You have made repeated commitments to deal with corruption, yet you do nothing about it. Instead, you do your utmost to cripple institutions that are supposed to outlaw corrupt activities. You do nothing about the governance crisis, mismanagement, and corruption in state-owned enterprises, which has become a major destabilizing factor for our economy. When, you are going to make, when are you going to make good on the promises that you made last year to restructure these institutions? You talk glibly about promised radical transformation through a black industrialist program. And we expect you to do the same tomorrow evening. Yet the result of your work so far is that the richest black person is now Mr. Ajay Gupta. Ultimately, day by day, your focus is on making sure that South Africa's economic agenda serves your own personal interest as well as, as well as those of your family members and cronies. This has to stop. I'm sure you agree with me. Jacob Zuma, it is time to go. Comrades, and friends, we must all do whatever we can to make sure that tomorrow is the last state of the nation address that President Zuma addresses. As we say, and I invite you to join me, no more Zuma, no more. No more Zuma, no more. We need active citizenry. We need more of you to be active as citizens of this nation and cry out that no more Zuma. We need you to join others and get involved. Convene the Save South Africa groups wherever you are and use the rich information on our website to understand our programs and bring many citizens together who are committed to a South Africa that is well articulated in our constitution. Sign our people's motion of no confidence. Lobby your members of parliament that they demand that Zuma goes. We have to stop the Zuma nightmare and begin to dream again as a nation. We must be very firm in ensuring that the democratic project stays on course. 
We must use our energy to continue to drive Zuma out, but also to drive change beyond that. We must continue to build a society founded on social justice, human dignity, equality, and democratic principles. We must loudly reject looting, theft, corruption, and abuse of power, the contamination of state institutions, the distortion of the justice system for political gain, and the complete disrespect for our constitution. We must respect on the respect for our flag, our state institutions, and ultimately our sovereignty. And we must hold our leaders accountable, whoever they may be. <clears throat> we must ask this question. If it was right for former minister Gwen Mathang Nkabinde and Dina Pule to resign following adverse finding against them, why should the nation accept that you, Mr. President, remain in office for more serious violations? We must ask if it is right for the ANC to recall John Block following a guilty finding by a high court why should we expect that you suffer you, you 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 would suffer the same fate following adverse finding by the highest court in the land or is it because you are above the law shouldn't you be taking a leave perhaps from brian mulifi who resigned as he put it in the interest of escom following the state of capture report shouldn't you be in resigning in the interest of the country. Or is it so, perhaps, that we shouldn't expect you to do so, for you are a man without a conscience? Fellow South Africans, we must be steadfast in our demand for accountability. We must reject those who undermine our democracy and I intend on using state resources for nefarious means. They must be stopped. And we must build a society that is founded on democratic values that we fought for, the values enshrined in our constitution. That's why we demand that Zuma must go, and he must go immediately. For it is only when Zuma goes that South Africa will be saved. Save South Africa. Save South Africa. Zuma must go. Zuma must go. Zuma must go. Zuma must go. Amanda. Amanda. Aibuye. Aibuye. Thank you very much.